Welcome back to Starfish Coaching. I'm Eric Lee. Today, I have a special guest for my Founders Interview Series, and that's Janelle Green with Wing Woman Coaching. I will be exploring with her all about finding your purpose, because that's exactly what she did. So stay tuned. And here, I'd like to introduce Janelle Green with Wing Woman Coaching. Janelle, welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you so much, Eric. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. It's, uh, it's, it's my honor to have you on the show. Um, I'd like to just give a, a chance for you to introduce a little bit about yourself and your coaching service. Yes. Well, like Eric said, my name is Janelle Green. I'm out of Vancouver, Canada. And uh, I am a life coach that specializes in relationships. I'm really passionate about people being in love with each other, with themselves, with their life. And uh, I've been married for 15 amazing years. And, you know, really what I'm about is having a life that is so miraculous and so joyful. Because I think one of the things that a lot of us forget is that the time we have on earth is not very long. And we live like there is a, there's such thing as a someday or tomorrow. And so I really, you know, empower the people in my life and, and my clients to really step into who they know or they already know themselves to be, but they're just scared. And, or perhaps they already know that they want an amazing relationship with their, with their spouse. And there's just something in the way. And so I really use, you know, some transformational techniques to really help unst unstick people where they're stuck. Um, I think as humans, we are not designed to grow, we're designed to survive. And so a lot of people, you know, they know what they want, they just don't know how to get there. Or they have their fear getting in the way of having them fulfill and what really matters to them in life. Yeah, that is, uh, you know, I resonate with so much that you talk about. We're both coaches, but we're in different realms. Uh, but it's very similar, right? Mm -hmm. um, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, or as a husband as a wife, all of these are common principles. And that's why I wanted to have you on my show to just have that conversation and just explore some of these topics. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, when we were talking, um, one thing that was really uh, left a lasting memory for me in our conversation was how you went from corporate sales and just crushing it in that role to not being happy and just wanting to find your purpose in that. So maybe you share with the, with the audience how that came about. What was your journey there? Yeah. Um, so maybe five years ago. No, I would even say, so I've been in sales for 12 years. That's all I've ever known. Like you said, you know, I was in software sales. I was making six figures. I was working five hours a day from home, traveling the world. I had this amazing life with an amazing company. And I started to feel this rumble and it kind of felt like the Jumanji rumble. Like there was something that right. was about to happen, but I wasn't sure what that was. And, you know, here I was getting free trips. I, I want a free trip to Rome. Wow. I got to bring my husband. I want a free trip to Bermuda. I got to bring my husband. And so there was no reason for me to be unhappy. And I think that's the first, in the beginning, that's what I was grappling with was like, I have everything that I could ever want. And yet there's something missing mm -hmm. inside of me. And so I really started to pray about it and just be like, you know, God, universe, please tell me what is my purpose in this life? And as I got closer to 40, I really started to think, okay, like the first half of my life was incredible. It was like rock star life. But what is my life actually about? Right. right. You know? And so I really started to think about that. And uh, I pictured myself at the pearly gates of heaven and St. Peter saying to me, Janelle, what did you do with your life on earth? And all I could think of was like, yeah, I made lots of money and I sold software. I mean, that's not who I am. I am, I'm so much more than that. And so I really started to think about, okay, if money wasn't an option, if time wasn't an option, if I could redo my life again and start from, a, from nothing, what would right. I create? And so I started to do different personality assessments and just trying to get a sense of who am I? Because I've been wearing this sales person costume for so long that I didn't know who I was outside of that. It was like my identity. 
And it was my success identity. And it was, you know, being someone who was such an overachiever and the thought of starting something completely new at 40 was terrifying. And also having the kind of lifestyle that I was living, you know, with the kind of income I was making going, okay, can I actually transition out of that? And like, I knew it was going to be super uncomfortable, but just, you know, one morning I woke up and I was like, today's the day. And I just walked into my office and I gave my notice. I didn't have a plan B. I didn't have another job lined up, had no clue what tomorrow was going to look like. I just knew that was it. You know, it's kind of like, and this is going to be kind of a morbid example, but you know, when you have a, if you have a pet and your pet is really sick and you don't want to put them down and you're like, no, hang on, hang on. And then one day you just know, you're just like, this is it. This can't happen anymore. And that's kind of what it was like for me. I woke up that morning and that was it. And so I walked into my that office and gave my notice. And um, I really just t- took the next months to really get into who am I and what are my unique right. abilities. And what I saw when I looked at my unique abilities and who I am, like what makes me special is I am, and I say this humbly, I am super right. generous with my emotions, with my money, with my time. I'm just, I just love being with people and I love knowing that I make a difference and an impact. Um, I created my own bucket list this year and my, my bucket list is to impact half a million people before I die. That's amazing. I love that. You know? And so, um, so yeah, so the first six months was really, I think dealing with myself, like just that transition of like, being in a corporate where you've got someone telling you what to do, right? Go make these sales to like, oh gosh, I'm my own boss, but I'm, I'm a crappy boss. (laughs) How do I figure out how to employ myself and hold myself accountable to what I say I want to do? And then it was like, okay, well now I've got my certification. Now what, (laughs) who do I want to help? I want to help everybody. And so I was kind of in this swirl of overwhelm of like, I just want to help the world. And everyone's saying, well, Janelle, you can't help the world. You got to pick something, right? And so I thought about that. I'm like, okay, who, where would I want to make the biggest difference? I looked at where is it that I see there's a missing, like there's, there's this gap out in the world that it seems that no one else is dealing with or very few are dealing with. And I also looked at like, what could I just, what could, what do I know a lot about? What have I had a life experience about? Where can I really empathize with what people are dealing with in life. And so really what I decided to do was focus on relationships. You know, my husband, first of all, is my inspiration. He, you know, he's my, this is my second marriage. And I learned a lot of about myself in my yes. first, <laughs> I call it my <laughs> practice marriage, <laughs> but you know, being in the marriages I'm now and just being so happy, so content and feeling like we're in such flow all the time. And seeing that majority of um, couples are not in flow, that there's a lot of animosity and tension and disconnect. I said, this is where I want to make a difference is in relationships. And specifically, I really have a soft spot for guys. I feel like guys are not set up to win. I feel like guys don't have the support. And there's a lot that is expected of, of a man. You know, 5,000, 10,000 years ago, all you needed to do is go and hunt and bring back the food. And and that was your job. And now it's like, you got to be emotionally connected. You got to be vulnerable. You got to, you know, be able to listen. (laughs) And it's a tough gig. And, you know, and women have it tough too. You know, they're trying to have a job and babies and be there for their family and also be a wife. So I can really see that, you know, with all of the stuff that I've gone through in my life um, that I can really appreciate what they're going through right. on both sides. So that's really wow, what I'm passionate that about. That is so cool. There's so much to unpack in there. Um, as I was going I through, I had so many questions, but let's, let, let, let me try to remember some of them. Yeah. First of all, I, you know, yeah. I do give you tribute for realizing that you're not happy inside and making that change because a lot of people are scared. Like, like you were, and a lot of people don't want to kind of make that jump, right? Um, for me as a yeah. business coach, I, I my, my mission in Starfish is to help people actualize their goals while aligning with their purpose. Um, that's one thing that I have always been very blessed with is to have known what I wanted to do. But I have so many friends and colleagues that still wake up in the morning, 
don't like their job, but they still go in. And that's just such a waste because you spend so much time of your day at work. And if you're not passionate about it or, or you're not feeling fulfilled, then why? Right. So you, you kind of made that that change and found something that was right for you. So, you know, I give you full tribute for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I, I agree. I think that there's a lot of reasons why people don't make the jump, but a lot of it is like, I've heard I'm too old, right? Or like, how is this going to impact us in, um, financially? It's going to use up our, our savings. And, you know, I went through all of that as well, but I was like, okay, so what? It's just money. So what if I go into debt? So what if I even, so what if I fail? Why if this doesn't work out? But that feeling of knowing, you know, that it could have been possible and I just didn't try. Mm -hmm. I couldn't live with that. And for the first few months, that was what I was grappling with. I was like, I can't do this. Like I was dealing with like the fraud syndrome, the, you know, the imposter syndrome, like all of that. I'm not good enough conversation, right? How can I compete out there? But I realized like I couldn't give up and I couldn't turn away from my dream, even if I wanted to. Because my head would say, go do the safe thing and make lots of money. And my heart is like, no, please, I have something I want to give you. And I've been really like tapping into my intuition because I believe our intuition is God right. speaking to us about what we really should be doing. And when there's a misalignment, that's where the upset and the struggle and the suffering happen. And so I just really just listened to what was going on and you know, I made a lot of hard decisions. You know, I, I want to just quickly say in March, I got offered a job to uh, coach uh, a large insurance company, their sales force. They were offering me $10,000 as a signing bonus. And I was going to make a hundred grand in my first year, like easy. And I thought, oh, this is totally my thing. It's back to, but it's back to sales again. And I was there about to write my exam. I had already booked my exam. And then something just spoke to me. And it was like, Janelle, this isn't you. You're going to be going back to the same thing you did. Yeah, you're going to have great money. But do you really want to be talking about insurance and talking about worst case scenarios right. with people all day long? I'm like, that's not who I am. I'm like sunny, bright, positive, optimistic. That's who I am. And so I had to say no, even though I had already signed the contract. And it was a really tough decision, but it was, I really needed to be authentic and true to myself. That, you know, that's amazing. Um, and I think when people are deciding on making that journey, it's like, if they saw the end point, they would totally do it. But the problem is yeah. they're standing at the yeah. fork of the road and the fear kicks in yeah. and it's so hard for them to decide. Right? Yeah. So one thing I actually did do, and I, this is a, a, a suggestion, what I would offer some of you that are not sure. What I did is I actually wrote to myself from two years in the future. Great. And I wrote about, I wrote about what my life looked like. And I wrote about what it is that I had to do in order to get to where I, where that That's was awesome. at two years. And then the other exercise I did is I had to get really straight and honest with myself about what is it I'm afraid right. of. Cause when you actually write it down on paper and you look at it and you reflect on it, you go, huh? These are all really kind of silly because they're just fears. They're not actually real. They're just like, what ifs, but none of it is actually in reality. Like we get to create that. So having that clarity by writing those things down really made a difference. The other thing that I saw made a difference is I talked with a lot of people who listened to me really big and listened to people who were where I wanted to be rather than speaking to people who had small minds that told me I couldn't do it that it was hard. Like, why did I leave my job? That was right. stupid. You know, like I really just, I cut that out and I just focus on people who were like, absolutely. You can do this, Janelle. You have every capability and you, here's what you yeah. got to go do. No, that's awesome. You know, so. what you said there is so important and I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit because it's so valuable to just break it down. There's three things that I hear there and this applies for everyone, whether it's relationship or business. Um, there's the famous, Stephen Covey said it, start with the end in mind. And that's exactly what you did, right? You wrote to yourself two years from now, assuming everything was perfect the way it is and talk and working back and reverse engineering that. That's one thing that I coach a lot on and many people coach a lot on is start with the end in mind. What does that look like for you? If you made that change, if you made that pivot, what does that look like? And then you yeah. plan for that. 
So that's huge. Uh, the yeah. other thing I heard was the fear yeah. aspect. And fear is one of those funny things. Really, there's only two types of fears. There's a real world fear, which is, you know, your life is in danger. There's a tiger coming at you and there's fight or flight. And mm -hmm. then there's the other bigger aspect of fear, which we make up every single day. And it's just something that we make up in our mind and we get fearful. But what people don't realize is that that fear is only missing data. Once you go and gather the data about that fear, it actually subsides. And that's what you did exactly mm -hmm. is you wrote down all of those fears and looked at it and says, okay, is this even logical? Right? So you challenge that. Yeah. And that's awesome. I remember you were talking about, um, yes, yeah, surrounding yourself with people uh, that are positive, right? And that's the third thing I want to talk about is um, so many people just get pulled down and whether they do it consciously or subconsciously, they surround themselves with people that don't give them that positive influence to inspire them, to motivate them. Um, you know, there's that, there's that saying, you are the average of the five people you surround yourself uh, with. So set yourself mm -hmm. up your life with people that will help you win, whether they're, you, they're pulling you up in terms of uh, mindset thinking or cheering you on, all of that stuff. That's so important, whether it's relationship or business or whatever in life. And actually, one other thing I wanted to talk about is how you kind of just committed and made that summit work. Um, that's one of the ways to really just fully commit. I work with so many people that are like one foot in and one foot out, and they can never decide until you burn that bridge behind you and there's no way back. Yes. <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> there's no going back. You, you, sometimes you just got to set your, your, your life up that way so that you're pushing yourself and forcing yourself to make that move. And then greatness rises up and you never know that until you are in that situation. Yeah. And that's why it's so important yes. to have a coach. Cause that is, that is them going, no, 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 no. You can't go back. Come on, keep going, keep going. You know, I have a personal trainer and it's the same thing. I'm like, can I just have five minutes, you know, five second break. She's like, nope, nope. Next, next, next. Keep going, keep going. I'm chasing you. I'm like, okay. But that's what I need. We need a little bit of butt kicking once in a while. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we get in our, in our own way so many times and that, that, that coach is just so important. So, yeah. And I think too, it's really important to be clear about what your priorities are and your why at the end of the day, because for example, you know, people say, you know, I want lots of money. That's what I want. It's actually not the money mm -hmm. that people want. It's the stability, it's the freedom, but it's actually not the money. And I think that was something that for me, I thought money was high on my list and there it was. And I was just like, actually, no, this is not it. What I really crave is like, you know, when I look at why I was so successful in sales, you know, what I saw was I got such a good payoff from feeling validated and, you know, getting these awards and, and the money was a representation that I was good enough. And the, 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 the trips were a representation that I was the best, but it was actually not the money that made me feel right. fulfilled. It was knowing right. that I could, I could do something really, really well. And so having to like, you know, having to leave something that I knew like the back of my hand and doing something completely different was so scary but if i was old but what i did was i you know i'm a very visual person so i would put up post-it notes everywhere reminding myself yes. of my why and reminding myself that really at the end of my life what is it that i actually want to achieve and say and and then getting really clear that what am i willing to put myself through because i knew it was going to be a crazy roller coaster am i willing to put myself through the ringer to win the game that i'm out to win, which is impact to half a million people. Yeah, no, for sure. That is huge. And, you know, it, you work with relationship uh, uh, issues. I work with business issues, but there's so much commonality. What you're talking about is something I coach on a lot yeah. is when you're running a business, you have to be connected with your why. What's your purpose? What's your mission? What's your vision? Because mm. like relationships in business, you get the ups and downs right? The peaks and the valleys of any business. And if you're not fully connected to 
your purpose in life and why you're doing your business, the first dip that you'll feel, you'll be wiped out. That's it, right? You, you yeah. need that strong reason to be pulled through to ride over that and then you get to your next peak. So that's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And I think also having that level of commitment is so important. So I ran my first webinar about a month before my summit and I got a little bit of negative, I won't say negative comments, but there was some stuff that really kind of shook me that really made me like question myself. And yeah, like kind of what you were saying, there was a moment where I was like, I can't do this. I can't, I can't handle this, you know, people's judging me. And, uh, you know, and just before I was about to like throw in the towel for a, for a moment, <laughs> of course, you know, I was just like, no, you know what? It's not about them. They are not, they are not the people I'm out to help. There are thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not millions of people out there that are looking for right. someone like me, even if, even if I'm not that, I'm not that person for those people who said whatever they said, I can stand in my mission and just stay committed to what my purpose is. And so really I had to, I had to stop making it about me. I had to get my own, like looking bad, being judged and being like, I don't care about that. What I care about is serving people. And so making it about people, not yes. about me. Now I, I want to maybe um, go to the business side of your coaching business. Cause it's, it was a pivot for sure. And it's, it's still a, a business. Um, Share with us what, what was some early struggles that you had and how you overcome that so that other people can relate. Some of my early struggles. Well, first of all, I would say my ego got in the way for sure. I had it like, oh, I have so much sales experience and that's what a lot of coaches struggle with. Oh, this is going to be simple, right? And uh, people said, you know, give yourself two years. I'm like, two years, I can do this in six yeah. months, you know? Um, and when things, when I realized that selling in corporate was very different in selling coaching services and I was getting stuck, I was getting rejected. I was like, oh crap, how do I make this? How do I make this shift? And my ego that was saying to me, like, you should be better than this was really, uh, disempowering yes. me. And so that's really what I started to look at. Like, okay, well, Janelle, like, this is just part of it. Like you just, you just need to get you just need to figure it out. It's okay. Um, so that would definitely be the first thing was like dealing with my right. humility. And that's, you know, that's um, probably, a, it, I, I know for sure it is a very common thing um, for people, even if they don't have a, a, a really good track record in another career previously, people's egos just naturally get in the way. So what's one tip you would give hmm. for, for people who experience that same struggle? Um. But I think it's great, again, going back into surrounding yourself with people who have gone through the journey and sharing that experience. Because what I got after I finished beating myself up, you know, talking to other coaches, they're like, oh, yeah, I've been at this for 10 years and I still haven't figured it out. Yes. You know, and it's like, oh, OK, so you know what? This journey that I'm on is OK. And the other thing I would say, too, is not to compare yourself to other people. We always compare our worst to yes. other people's best, yes. right? Especially on social media, you see these, like, they look so posh. You know, I see women in their, like, suits looking badass, and they're like, yeah, I've got this, like, seven-figure coaching business, you know? But I'm like, a lot of it is smoke and mirrors, and also a lot of it is they've been, they've worked their ass off for 20 years to get to where they are, and I'm, I'm where I'm at, and I think just being the best version of yourself today and every day is all you right. can do. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's so easy to get distracted with all the glossy stuff out there. Uh, and I think that it goes back to, mm -hmm. like for me, uh, I, I think about going back to that purpose, right? This, this, whole, this whole talk is about purpose and both our businesses are about helping people find their purpose and aligning with it. If you are truly aligned with mm -hmm. your reason, why you exist, um, your purpose, then really it doesn't matter um, what everyone else is doing and how successful they are because you need to focus on yourself. If you are persistent and committed to your cause, you will get there. You know, that, that's, that's as basic as it gets. Mm. And sometimes we forget about that. Yeah, and there's like 7 billion people or whatever that number is out there, you know? And if you can have like even 0. 0.00001% of that, 
like you're still good. There's always, I feel like there's a market for everything. I'm, I'm shocked at some of the services that people <laughs> yeah. sell that I'm like, we make six, seven figures yeah. doing that. Okay. Well then what am I complaining <laughs> about? Right. Um, and I would say to, just to add Eric, I think looking at all the excuses that we make up, like being present to all of that conversation that we're having mm -hmm. about ourselves is so right. powerful because our emotions, our thoughts really can mess, mess with us. Yeah. Right. And, uh, there's times when I wake up in the middle of the night and kind of like a panic, like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? Who thought this was a good idea? You know? And, and it's like, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop. Okay. You yeah. know, check in. But you know, if we're not conscientious of it, or we don't have a coach or someone to really continue to pull us and say, don't listen to that voice. This is what I want you to hear. And this is what I tell my clients. I say, you know, that voice in your head, stop listening to that voice. I want you to listen right. to my voice. I want you to listen to how I listen to you. And this is who you are for me. You are this big person who's out there to make a huge difference in the world. Listen to me, not right. to that voice. Yeah. And yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to talk a bit about that because that that's so, it's such an interesting concept, right? Like the, the coach idea. I personally believe that everyone should have a coach um, just because we have mm -hmm. so much blind spots that we don't see. Like for instance, just visually, I only see this. I don't know what's happening behind me. So that's an analogy for blind spot. Mm -hmm. There's so many aspects of you, your limiting beliefs that you don't understand because you are in that fishbowl and someone from the outside looking into the fishbowl gives you that 360 view and gives you those comments. And that's what a coach does. Now, the problem though, is that mm -hmm. our ego, which you mentioned, gets in the way. Like the first thing you need to do before you can get that feedback from someone else is admit and have that humility that, hey, I need help. But as business owners, yeah. we're mostly A types, right? Entrepreneurs, CEOs, we're mostly that type A personality that, that has to look put together, has to look confident and project that. So that the last thing we want to do is admit that, hey, we need help. So it goes back to the ego. Mm -hmm. And for your business with relationship and men, I'm not sure about women, but men for sure, right? They have that ego and they got to portray that, hey, there's nothing wrong here. So I would say the first mm -hmm. thing is to check in with that ego, leave it at the door and just accept some feedback. And it doesn't have to be a professional coach like you or I. It could be a friend. Mm -hmm. It could be a colleague. As long as you are reaching out to someone for that feedback and for that, that blind spot check, that's the first step already to, towards growing. And so I think being, being really open and also just being really like connected to who you are and what's going on inside, because this doesn't lie. Right. And we pretend we ignore it. We try to stifle it and say, Shh. but I think when we actually listen, this will always, this will always tell us, you know, when you get, when I get to that fork in that road and I'm not sure mm -hmm. this is where I go. And I say, okay, left or right. And, you know, and if I'm honest, neither are the right answer. However, you know, I try, I'm, I naturally go up here and I have to pay attention to right. come down here. Yeah, for sure. And anal analyticalness will kick in and where, and for me, where that doesn't work is because if I'm trying to get it right and trying to not fail, I'm never going to make a decision because I'm so afraid of making a move and making the wrong move where I'm like, no, I just need to make right. a move and whether it's the right or the wrong thing, I will learn from it regardless if it's, it's if it works out or if it doesn't. And so I've really been working on my context as to what failure actually is. Cause if we can have, if we can neutralize the feeling of failing and have it something that's actually great and a blessing and something that we can actually embrace, there's so much power behind that. Yeah. And many people don't do that. They, they fail and they waste a good failure is how I like to call it. There's so much to learn in any failure that oftentimes our ego kicks in. And when we fail, we're like, okay, I don't want to look at that again. But if you analyze it, there's so much data in there that you, that can help you the next time around. I'd love to give maybe a couple suggestions for those who are dealing with a, a relationship that they're struggling in. And it doesn't have to be anything 
like a huge struggle, but even just like an area that you're struggling with. Um, you know, we talked about ident identifying fear. You know, a lot of times when we argue, there's something that we're not saying. We're not, there's a thing that we're afraid of, right? Um, and then we take it out on our partner and we get angry with them. But if we really look over here, there's what is it? Asking yourself, what is it that I'm actually afraid of? Why am I freaking out on my mm -hmm. partner right now? Um, the other thing is like being present, you know, sitting together and being on your phones is not quality time. And especially if you are a business owner and you're, you're working 12 hours a day, and then you come home to be with your family, turn off your phone, be with your family, give them all of your love and attention. Because if they don't get you for 12 hours a day, and then, you know, you blink and all of a sudden they're all grown up. One of the things I do see is that women, we start to turn ourselves off emotionally when we're not connected to our partner. You know, we, we've been hearing about this like independent mm -hmm. woman thing. That is a protection mechanism because we don't feel like we can rely on our partner to take care of us. So we're like, okay, I right. got to take care of myself. But really at the end of the day, what she really wants is she wants to be taken care of. She wants a hero. She wants that. She wants to have that person be by her side. So even if she goes, you know, I don't want you, I don't need you. I can do, I have my own money. I got my right. own, well, la, la. it's, it's all, yeah. it's all. Yeah. They're putting together a hard shell, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the other thing I would say is like, are you in communication? Are you sharing yourself? Even if you've had a hard day, you've had a very stressful day at work, you know, especially if you're a guy, sometimes, you know, women go, how was your day? And they go, Guys go, it's fine. Well, tell me about your day. What happened? <laughs> Nothing. For women, that's really tough because we want we want to, we want you to share right. your life with us. So whatever's been going on for you, whether it was good or bad, we want to hear about it. Um, and then the other the last thing I would say is, you know, show appreciation for your partner. Take action. Don't just be a bunch of words and a bunch of I love you's, but really like show love. Like love is a right. verb. So like what actions are you taking to show that that affection to your partner and having them right. really feel loved? So Thank you. Those say. those are three really good tips, and it applies for everyone. And it, although I'm a business coach and my audience are business and entrepreneurs, these apply to you because your business needs to have balance in life, right? You can be really strong in business, but if you're weak on the relationship side, it's going to affect your business. Trust me. So work on your relationship yeah. side, make sure that's balanced and that's growing and thriving and nurturing, and that will actually push your business side. So those are three good tips from Janelle. So thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And I just want to leave with like, remember that we, we do all of this work for what, for our family, but if our family's not there and if you're not there for your family, you know, there you are, fast forward two years, you got your big house, you got your nice car, oh, yeah. and you're alone. And your kids are living somewhere else. Like, is it worth it? So yeah, always keep the big picture in mind, yeah. your why. And never forget about the people Exactly. Who love and you. you know, if you're successful in business, but you're empty at home, that's not true success, right? So thank you so much. And Janelle, just before we leave, Please share with us how our audience yeah. can get in touch with you if they're looking for relationship coaching. Yeah, I can be found on LinkedIn. Um, you can go to my website, which is JanelleGreen.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm Wing Woman Hero because my company is Wing Woman Coaching. So, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, podcast. And um, if you do, please subscribe to our channel. I'm going to have ongoing founders interviews and also business coaching tips. Great people like Janelle will come up onto my channel. So I'd love to share that with you.